Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and today we're going to be doing a quick little video about weapon attachments. Now, weapon attachments generally vary from the type of weapon you have, but there's a bit of a consensus and some parallels between all of them, determining which ones are super useful and nice to have, and other ones that are more, well, aesthetic, or, well, even just counterintuitive, we'll say. So, things you can have on your weapon Particularly for airsoft, mind you, although they are also more useful. There are some that are more useful in real life than others. We'll be getting into that now. There are two things that your rifle positively must have that are considered the two most important things on a well majority of sites and people you're going to talk to. Those are your sling and your light. So we'll start with the sling. Do you need a sling for your weapon? Um, I would generally argue yes. Slings are incredibly important and incredibly useful, and they uh, get a lot of things done for you. So, with a sling, what you got is you can secure your weapon if you need to transition to a handgun, which I don't have equipped right now. If you need to transition over to a handgun, I keep this in my pocket, of course, because I generally don't carry handguns. So we put that in the pocket. We'll stuff that down that way. You're going. You're going. Ta 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 ta. Oh, out of ammo. If you don't have time to do anything else. You draw your weapon. With a two-point sling, you've got your weapon secure to your body. This one's actually up on, all up on my neck because it's a pain like that. Go ahead and move it that way. Boom. We have our weapon. We can draw a handgun. We can do handgun things. And you can also keep it slung and out of the way. You can also, depending on the type of rifle you have, you can adjust the sling from way up forward. If you're doing more of a march to clo uh, up towards the midpoint, which is better for CQB sort of ordeals. Lowers the weapon a bit, gives you better use of transition. With a two-point tactical sling, you can transition just fine from shooting strong hand to your offhand. It's not a big deal, even with the sling running under my arm. It's still lo loose enough, I can still get in there and transition. Transitions are very important. Now, one-point slings. I'd argue the two-point sling is the superior option, but one-point slings are also incredibly popular. Why? One-point slings do not provide a lot of weapon support when not in use. The weapon kind of dangles freely. It can swing around and smack you unless you secure it with another option. But one-point slings are super popular because of the ease of transition and the fact that you don't have any loops or anything getting in the way of your mobility at all. But one-point slings, if you drop them, if you draw your handgun and you're trying to move with a one-point sling, with a two-point, the weapon's going to stay more or less close to the center. It might fling around a little bit, but not a crazy amount. Now, if I need to climb a ladder or something, you can't really do that as effectively with the one-point sling. With the two-point sling, you're like, okay, I need to go up this ladder, move it along back here. Sling keeps it secure. It's now behind me, out of the way, and I can do all my ladder maneuvers, draw a handgun if I'm gonna, if I'm out of ammo or something crazy. But yeah, option there. So, one-point sling works. Three-point sling, just no, 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 no. You do not. Mm, no, you will not. Do not use a three-point sling. Just don't do it. They were designed for done with MP5s in mind. You cannot transition. They're a pain. They keep the weapon really secure to your body, but you can't do any operating. And that's like the whole point. So if you're using a three-point sling, you're a pogue. That's all there is to it. <laughs> you will be a pogue. You will be carrying a rifle, and it'll be nice for carrying a rifle, especially over extended periods, but you're never going to be using the rifle. Don't do three-point slings. Just, just don't. Get the idea out of your mind. Tactical two-point, and maybe a one-point if you're super high speed and you're never going to have to carry your rifle ever again outside of combat. So, two-point sling is my recommendation for its versatility and ease of use. So, slings out of the way. We've covered good, okay, and terrible ideas. So, the second important thing, a light. Most people like to keep their light on their right side of their weapon at the three o'clock. If you put it to a dual switch, you can easily access the light that way. Now, particularly airsoft-wise, your PEC-15 box has a built-in light. And if you got the decent, like, um, oh, who makes this one? I don't remember who makes this PEC anymore, but if you get a decent PEC, then you can even get the dual switch thing, and you, you, know, you can move your switch off to the side, and you can activate it that way just fine. Lights are incredibly important, especially if you're wearing dark visors, like sunglass visors or something, you inside a building, you need to be able to see, you don't have time to take your glasses off, boom, just illuminate everything. Building's dark, you don't know if there's a terrorist in the corner, boom, illuminate everything. Super useful. Lights are important. In addition to the PEC-15 box, you could also be talking about lasers now. 
lasers being either visible or invisible, depending on if you're using the IR laser or not. This one is the green little laser. We flip this over, boom, we have a laser. Pew. Great for close quarters shooting. Not usable for airsoft. You can, uh, I wouldn't even bother with the airsoft or laser for airsoft wise if you're going to be shooting people. If you're doing targeted drills, a laser can be super helpful in helping you hit targets faster than just your dot sight. Now, additionally, there's also your sort of metal setup, larger lasers that tend to be a bit more powerful, but this is a good deal of extra weight up on the front of your gun. And if you're going to be using it for target shooting, you can, you can keep them separate. And again, you can keep the light off on your three o'clock. I like my PEC 15 because it has both a laser and a light pretty much on the 12th because I have a riser rail I can see over it just fine. So lights and lasers. Lights are the most important one. Laser is kind of an optional backup plan. So I've got a camera mount on here. You can do camera mounts if you want to. That's not really going to impact everything. It's not going to have a huge impact uh, airsoft wise or anything of that nature. Um, 45 degree offset rail, particularly for iron sights and the like. I've got this one because I want to put a little dot sight on here if I ever move up to a, uh, what the hell is this called, an ACOG sight. Because ACOG sights are a lot of fun, they're 4X, they're better for ranged rifle builds, and they work really well. They can also do the close quarters, but again, you could keep a ACOG sight, so you can even zoom in and see what's going on off in the distance, spy on people, do your radio communications, hey, we got movement over here. And in addition, with a 45 degree mount, either with iron sights, or with even just a reflex sight. Iron sights will work out just fine. Reflex sight's probably the better option, but it's an extra battery you need to worry about. You just can't the gun to a 45 degree angle. Just boom. So you're zooming in on people. Hey, there's action over there. Oh, someone's coming up on the side. Can't. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Cool. So 45 degree mounts, 45 degree rails. ACOG's great if you have an M4. Not so useful on SMGs and other such guns, especially weapons that aren't going to have a lot of range. Most airsoft guns, particularly even in Japan, are only going to be shooting about 50 meters anyway. A Bushnell dot sight will work just fine, and if you want to do more of the spying on the enemy, looking for movements or setup, ACOG, all purpose. Although a lot of the clone for ACOGs aren't going to be as good, the Bushnell, for about 80 some odd bucks, you can get a real dedicated red dot. So, options there, you can do either or. Iron sights. Even just the standard iron sights, you have backups. Those are good. They're nice to have. They're important to know to use. But generally, you're going to get a lot more mileage out of either a dot sight, a reflex sight, or a ACOG, or really anything. So, as we got there, we've covered some of the important things. Suppressors and uh, sound noisemakers. They're more aesthetically pleasing. This one actually does have a sufficient dampering on the Polar Star setup, so airsoft-wise, it's very useful for making the gun quieter and in more stealth assassinations. As for the um, noisemaker, if you want to make the weapon louder, then yeah, it makes it a bit louder, particularly with, uh, I'd imagine it's louder with, um, it could put a little crack on it, but nothing too crazy. Another alternative use for suppressors outside of tracer units, which are really fun, would be the, uh, I was going to say, you can keep the suppressor on there and get a longer inner barrel and use it as a inner barrel shield. Improve your accuracy. So, options there. Now, we've covered some things that are very useful so far. Let's talk about some of the things that you're going to want to buy. And I'm going to basically tell you right now, don't do it. I'm going to say don't do it because I've generally been down that road and it's not going to, it's not going to work out the way you want. So, as much as I usually am praising the M203 and various grenade launchers, because they are fun, they are great. IRL, launching a grenade and blowing up the insides of buildings and just ruining people's days is great. Fantastic. Airsoft-wise, you're going to have a bit... Depending on the rules, generally, you're not going to be able to use a lot of projectiles. And the projectiles you do using are going to have their own problems. But most importantly, you're mostly going to be using this as a super shotgun. Downside being that your shells... And even this is going to be tied into a lot of gas guns and stuff, is that they have a lot of small seals, and those seals can break, the magazines can leak, you get all kinds of trouble. So you're going to be going through a ton of trouble, keeping grenades together and well-maintained. You put them in this grenade launcher, which is going to add a lot of extra weight to the front of the gun, and you're going to be getting tired a lot quicker, and it's generally going to suck. Now, grenade launchers do look cool as hell. In IRL, they do some fantastic things, but here, as of, like, reaching a room and blasting everything inside the room, which you could also just do with a normal cyclone grenade. If you have a cyclone grenade, you can even throw cyclone grenades behind bunkers where people are encamped. This 
you just don't have that option. IRL fantastic, but airsoft wise, it's just gonna be a lot of dead weight. And you're seldom gonna get to use it. Most people will be afraid of it, which is a cool benefit. And if you're on the move, you will still be able to hit targets. A lot of weight is gonna keep you from being a lot of the front guy. And also, with the grenades on your belt or in any pouches or anything, if you jostle them just right, if you bang up against the wall or anything just crazy enough, they're all gonna explode and shoot BBs everywhere and it's gonna cause trouble, so. They're also pain to load, pain to maintain, and prohibitively expensive. Not only does all of this suck to keep together and organize, but you pay a ton of money to do it, so. Just heed my advice. If you absolutely love grenade launches and have to do it, then sure, by all means. Otherwise, I would say they're gonna be closer to the avoid section. Unless you're allowed to use projectiles and tag rounds, but even so, it's you're still going to be in the prohibitively expensive portion, so. With caution. A lot of caution. Then there's the Master Key. The little uh, shotgun was the XM26, I want to say it is, shotgun. It's mounted under there, put a magazine, it shell eject, you fire three BBs at a time. Again, really, really cool. Not sure what the maintenance is going to be on like it, but it probably weighs about twice as much as a grenade launcher, so. A lot more weight on the front of your gun and everyone's gonna be like, hey, come check out my really cool uh, Rainbow Six Siege buck cosplay. No. You're putting a lot of weight on the gun. I mean, if you like it and you really want to carry the extra weight, then by all means, I've done it before. It's fun with the grenade launcher. You can do it. If you move away from it, you'll be able to shoot a lot faster. You'll be able to move a lot more efficiently. You won't have to carry two different types of magazines and extra grenades and all that nonsense. This is gonna all tie into why everyone carries frag grenades a sidearm and a primary weapon because they're the easiest to keep together and maintain and use and everything. Frag grenades can be a bit trickle but you know to each their own. Frag grenades have a lot more use than this and weigh exponentially less so. A few other things. Now angled foregrips we haven't really gotten into. So foregrips there's a few different types but you've got um, this, bi this bipod type which is incredibly long. I'll give you a little good now. Fun thing with the vertical grips is they were invented Basically with special forces using M4s, M4s had very, very little rail room. So you put your night vision optic, you put your PEC-15, and you put, I don't know, whatever other flashlight or laser light or whatever other craziness on there. You've got no room for your hand, so that's where these got popular. You can slap one of these up on the bottom, gives you a point to still grab the gun with a ton of things on a minimal rail room. That's generally been resolved. For the most part, more modern weapons have more rail room, even with my weapon, which, mind you, is still roughly the length of an M4. Don't mind the suppressor. It's still roughly the length of an M4, but instead of having a metal barrel that just sort of protrudes with an iron sight, you've now got everything covered in rails. So, with these types, generally you want to use them as they come, sort of like a hand stop. You generally don't want to be gripping all of it. Holding it like this is going to throw off your general nature to aim like this so you get a better feel of where the bullets are going to be going. Prio perception I believe it was called. But yeah, benefit to this at least, what puts in more of a uh, kind of useful factor is you can deploy a bipod, which means you can set your weapon down. If you don't want to be having your arm under your weapon the entire time while doing some DMR work, you now have a little stand that you can keep the weapon on. Keep everything out of the mud and keep your weapon a lot cleaner. So, cool little option. It'd probably work better without the polar star because I've got a hose coming out of the uh, grip of my gun, so. Other weapons, probably a great idea. Now, the normal sort of like uh, knight's armament by uh, vertical grip, again, M4s. If you've got a lot more rail room, you don't need it. You don't. It's dumb. You'll look silly. You'll be like, hey, what's the uh, vertical grip for? You're like, I can hold it like this instead of like this. And then you okay, and? You gotta be able to justify these things. At least, if nothing else, at least be able to justify it with, hey, it's fun and I like it. Not a strong justification, but a justification nonetheless. So you can use vertical grips at your discretion, preferably with an M4, or a submachine gun. Some machine guns are pretty popular with them, because you don't have a lot of rail room to begin with. So, I haven't had a chance to really test out the 45 degree angle grips, but I have heard they're fantastically great. You can even run them backwards. You're like, why would you run backwards? That sounds silly. Well, the reason being is it works entirely as a, a hand stop. I put my pinky in front of that and it stops entirely. Or if I want that little extra bit of grip, I can hold it more like this and really tuck the weapon stronger into my shoulder, reducing recoil and all that other fun stuff that you might be considering. So, options there. And that's a lot of the stuff you can do. That's most of the attachments. And then you start getting to like the uh, 
was it the the zoom with the uh, oh, what you call it? EOTech, and that's you know that's a pretty cool concept. I like that, but I never found a decent uh, zoom option. So the more stuff you put on your gun, the heavier it's going to get. This pec box weighs very little for what it is, and it gives me illumination, so I'm perfectly fine with it. Illumination is important to me. Being able to see is kind of a big deal. And if I did get nods, there is a IR laser built into this, and if I get it zeroed in, I'd be able to shoot in the dark with night vision goggles, adding more benefit to the uh, ACOG purchase, so, or the um, PEC-15 purchase, so. I got a DMR mag. Stubby little sniping mag. Fun stuff. And then, of course, you're going to want your lens protector if you don't have any sort of, like, cage or anything protecting an ACOG. And that's more or less all the attachments that I can think of. I mean, there's other stuff that people like and different sort of weird things, like the Taxac is really popular for comedic reasons. But yeah, so if you're trying to figure out what sort of external upgrades you can put on your weapon to make it more useful and a lot more beneficial, well, now you have sort of a general list for ideas. So cheers, stay chivalrous. I hope you I hope this video is nothing else, at least entertaining. Hopefully it gave you some fun ideas or some of the crazy things you were thinking about doing. Maybe now you'll reconsider and re-divert your money to something you can actually use. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you have any questions, feel free to post them down below. I'm generally not doing anything on my free time. I might be playing video games or getting exercise. Don't forget your exercise, by the way. As much as you can improve your rifle if you're out of shape and poorly maintained, then it's all for naught. So Cheers everyone, stay shield boys. Hope this video was educational and entertaining. And hopefully you got some stuff out of it now. Again, let me throw it once more, throw this out there. I'm not an expert of everything forever. I'd say I have moderate to mild experience in a lot of things, so. However, with a lot of the attachments, especially airsoft wise, that would be my recommendation. Red dot over ACOG, although ACOG if you can get a 45 rail set for close quarters, so. Cheers, stay shield boys. I'll hopefully see you guys on the 18th of March 2018 when I finally get to test this out, weather pending. So, cheers!